Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome those that may be watching live um, through the internet or who may click on this uh, later this afternoon and watch the service. We're in Isaiah 32, verse 9. And when you have it, you can either stand or say amen so I know everybody is ready. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 9. Hallelujah. Isaiah, who was called the millennial prophet. Amen. One of the prophets who spoke more about the millennial reign than any other prophet. And it reads in verse 9, it says, Rise up, you women who are at ease. Hear my voice, you careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. And I'm just going to go on a little farther and let's just read a little more. Many days and years shall you be troubled, you careless women. For the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble, you women who are at ease. Be troubled, you careless ones. Strip you and make you bare, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. They shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars. Yes, upon all the houses of joy and the joyous city. Because the palaces shall be forsaken, the multitude of the uh, city shall be left. The forts and towers shall be for dens forever, a joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. And we'll stop right there. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and... Lord, I ask, Lord, that you help me, Lord, preach this message. Lord, anoint me, Lord, to speak your words and what you want your people to hear, Lord. And anoint your people as well to hear and understand um, what you're telling us this morning. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Last night before bed, amen, I was going through podcasts on my phone, amen, amen trying to get fed and trying to uh, find the mind of the Lord and what He wanted is what I normally do. I'll go through scriptures and I may listen to a few podcasts, amen, and get fed myself, amen. I came across one that Brother Lauren had ministered and it just touched me and when he ministered it, it was this scripture, these scriptures he gave, but when he ministered it, Amen. It, it was for me as well. And what I mean by that is it wasn't as if, okay, this is what your people need to hear. No, it was something I needed to hear. Amen. As a pastor and also as a Christian, I needed to hear this first because when he preached about it, amen, it was things that I knew the Lord was dealing in my life. Amen. And as when you become a minister, you uh, soon f- uh, find out very quickly Amen, that when the Lord has a message for his people, he puts the preacher and the pastor through it first. Amen, so that he can be an example onto the flock. So not only what is it for what I'm giving you this morning, amen, it was for me last night when I heard Brother Lauren um, give this message in my life. And it's something we all deal with. Amen, and so God had to deal with me about it first in my own walk before I could um, preach it to you, amen, and show you and, and see if that's not something the Lord has been dealing with you in your walk, amen, and this is what he gave me, amen, and that first verse, before I even get into this, because it sounds like a lot of condemnation when you read these verses, but if you read the first two words, Amen. Out of all the verses we read, before the Lord, before the prophet Isaiah goes in all to everything, all the judgment that's going to hit and everything that's going on, amen, the Lord gives the answer first. Amen. He gives the answer first. Amen. And the rest is just latter if that answer is not heeded. Amen. I like that in the Old Testament. Every time you read about the prophets or in the Old Testament, the Lord always gives the answer first. And if the answer is not heeded, then he pronounces what's going to happen, which is judgment. Amen. So the first thing he says is rise up. 
Amen. Church, it's time to rise up, spiritually speaking. Amen. Looking to the things of God and not to the things of this earth and world. Amen. And so the answer this morning, before we get into anything else, is the Lord's telling us this morning to rise up. Rise up. Amen. Look to the heavenly things and not the earthly things. Amen. Whether it be to fill that void in your heart or fill that void in your soul and spirit or to find an answer, the Lord tells us, rise up. Look to heaven. Amen. Don't look to the things on this earth. This is what uh, Israel's problem was. They got their eyes off the Lord and they got their eyes on earthly things, earthly pleasures, idols, and they slowly started backsliding and the Lord would rise up prophets time and again trying to tell um, Israel at that time, which was the church, to turn around and look back to the Lord for their answers. Amen. And here Isaiah, he tells them in the midst of their idolatry, in the midst of their earthly pleasures, in the midst of looking towards other things. He says, get out of that stuff and rise up. Amen. He says, rise up. And he says, you women... And here now he gives the answer. Now he's telling what the problem is. And then after he tells what the problem is, he shows what's going to happen if the answer's not heeded. First of all, he gives the answer. He says, rise up to the standard which the Lord has set for us and given us. Amen. Which is faith in Christ the Messiah and what he would do and looking to that and keeping our eyes on that and to heavenly things and the spiritual things. And so he says, get out of the sin, get out of the idolatry, get out of the earthly pleasures and rise up to my standard. Amen. Which is the cross and with our eyes affixed onto God. Amen. And being consecrated onto him. And now he gives what the uh, problem is. He says, you women who are at ease, hear my voice, you careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Now, he's just not talking about the women and the daughters in Israel and the men and sons were fine. (laughs) No, that's not what he was saying. It was symbolic. Okay? If you read in the New Testament, uh, the Lord always calls the church his bride. Amen? And Christ is always the groomsman. Amen? It was the same way here. Um... This, when he says uh, women and daughters, he's talking about Israel, amen, the Hebrew people, amen, his bride at that time in the Old Testament, amen, just like the church is the bride, amen, in the New Testament, amen. So he says the problem with the church is they're at ease, amen, and they're careless. Now, when you translate that out, the word ease is shenayin. Amen. S-H-A-A-N-A-N. Which means secure. Amen. Or arrogant. Amen. And then he says, Hear my voice, you careless daughters. Once again, he tells them they're careless. And that word careless, amen, is batak. Which is B-A-T-A-K-H in the Hebrew. And it means smug, complacent, or self-absorbed. Amen. So Israel's problem back in, which is the same problem the church faces today, is that they're self-absorbed with themselves. Amen. They're complacent. Not moving forward with God's... Amen. But got their eyes on things of the earth, got their eyes on things in this life instead of heavenly things. Amen. And they're absorbed with themselves. And they're smug, thinking nothing bad can happen to them, amen. And they have a false security. Amen. Oh, praise God, amen. I've got my fire insurance, amen. Praise God. I may even know the message of the cross theology. uh, theology. I may know it, theological. I may even be filled with the Holy Spirit. So I got my flood insurance as well in case... The devil comes at me. So I got my fire insurance. I got my flood insurance. Now I'm going to go and do whatever I want to do. Mm, self-absorbed. 
Isn't that what the church is today? Self-absorbed? we got other things to worry about than the Lord. And what we do is we take God off our uh, mantle in our fireplace, take Him with us on Sunday or Wednesday or Thursday at church, and then when we're done, we put Him back up on the fire mantle until next week. Some of them even leave them up on the mantle on Sunday, Wednesday, or Thursday, or whatever your Bible study is. People don't like hearing that, but that's what the church's problem is. Lukewarmness. This is what lukewarmness is. Amen. Complacent. Self-absorbed. With a false security at ease. It's what Israel's problem was. It's what the church's problem is. Amen. That's the problem. And you don't believe me, look in Revelations and see the last church in the church age. Amen. The Laodicean. Lukewarm. Amen. I've got everything I need. I've got my goods. I've got my materials. I've got everything I need. I don't want any more. Amen. And Isaiah, amen, he even says himself to Israel. First of all, he gives the answer. He says, get out of that and rise up. Amen. Get out of that and rise up. Quit looking to the earthly things. Quit looking to the idols. And look to me and rise up to my standard and allow the cross to change you and mold you and have a closer walk with me. Be consecrated unto me in my ways. But the sad thing is, instead of the church rising up, they're lowering themselves and going into darkness and uh, earthly pleasures and sin and backsliding. But yet because they have a Christian name or they understand uh, theological terms and maybe understand the Bible a little bit, they're at ease, secure, comfortable, amen, smug, I'm good just where I'm at, amen, I know enough to get me into heaven and I know enough to keep the devil away if he does come and I don't want to go any further, amen, complacent. Amen. Self-absorbed. Amen. Now again, just as I said earlier, amen, the Lord had to deal with me about it, amen. And then once he dealt with me, amen, guess what? He gives it to me for a reason as well. Number one, for my walk, and number two, for other people's walk, and to be example and show them what to get out of. Amen. Because many Christians are self-absorbed with themselves, their own life. Amen. We're not our own anymore. We've been bought with the price. Amen. We belong to God. Amen. Self-absorbed. Amen. We're too worried about our own things, our own problems. And Amen. Why is it? Amen. We're, we're entertained with, uh, we like the flesh, we like the earthly things because it can entertain our flesh and entertains us, amen, and the things of God just go astray. But we say, oh, we know it all, so we're, and they have a false security, amen, and what happens is they backslide, amen, careless, amen, they're at ease, eh, it can't happen to us. And eh, we're in the United States of America, that stuff's going on over halfway around the world, but it won't happen to us, amen, we're at ease, we're secure, because on the dollar bill it says in God we trust, so we're good, amen. So we see what the problem is, amen, hmm. We see what the problem is. I want to take you back to Cain and Abel. Amen. Keep your spot here because we're going to come back to it. But go with me back to Genesis. I want to show you what happened. Genesis chapter 4 verse 16. Cain knew the way the Lord wanted him to go. Amen. Let me say that again. Cain knew that of the sacrificial system because God sacrificed an animal and clothed Adam and Eve. And all evidence points because of that that the Lord showed him that there had to be a sacrifice and taught it to Adam and Eve. And therefore Adam and Eve would teach it to their children. They taught it to Cain and they taught it to Abel. How do you know that? Because in the few verses after that, Abel is giving up the sacrifices which God demanded. 
Amen. So we know along the line somewhere that God did the sacrificial system and he clothed Adam and Eve when they sinned. And then he taught it to Adam and Eve on what they were supposed to do. Amen. And in turn, they taught it to their kids. We know that because Abel was offering up sacrifices. Amen. But Cain refused to do it. Amen. He got his eyes on the earthly things and offered up God vegetables and fruit instead of the bloody sacrifice. Because he became self-absorbed with himself. Amen. Think about this. In the Old Testament, the firstborn was supposed to get all the inheritance. He was the one that was supposed to receive everything. So it was supposed to go to Cain. But because he rebelled and he refused and got his eyes on earthly things instead of heavenly things, he lost it. And it was turned over to Abel. Amen. I said it was turned over to Abel, and then uh, Cain got angry and murdered him. Amen. And then it went on, and it was given to Seth, which uh, the uh, Messiah would come through that line, Seth. It was supposed to be given to Cain, but because he got self-absorbed with himself and worry about his other things and look at how beautiful his field was and his garden was here on earth instead of looking to heavenly things, he got his eyes off the Lord. He walked away from his presence. He walked away from everything he was supposed to receive because he was the firstborn and left it all because he got self-absorbed. And it caused him much trouble the rest of his life. Amen. Look in verse chapter 4, verse 16. It says, And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch, and he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begat Majul, and Majul begat Methusel, and Methusel begat Lamech. Amen. Now, what does that have to do with anything? First of all, Cain went out of the presence of the Lord. Amen. And every uh, son, if you notice through Cain's lineage, amen, first of all, he has Enoch. And the word Enoch really means education and learning. So they built a city that was all about education and learning without God. Amen. And it went on and on. And if you notice through uh, Cain's lineage also, if you read down a few more verses, it says Jubal, which was one of his descendants, invented uh, musical instruments and pretty much invented the music. Amen. And then uh, Tubal Cain, one of his descendants, amen, became a fine craftsman in all metals. Amen. And Lamech invented poetry. The first poet. So why would this all be coming through Cain's line instead of Seth's line? Because they was absorbed with self. Amen. And instead of looking to the heavenly things, they were looking to the earthly things to either entertain them or fill that void or fill that gap. Instead of looking to the things of God. Some good revelation there, amen. They walked away from the presence of the Lord, so to try to fulfill that gap or try to fulfill, amen, that crying in their heart and soul, they said, well, we'll just start inventing things. And they invented uh, metal making. They invented uh, the education and the learning. They invented music. They invented poetry, all these things to try to keep them entertained instead of looking to the things of God. And that's what the church is still doing. They're on a level with Cain instead of a level with Seth. And the Lord's saying, rise up to my level and look to my things. Amen. I I, I don't understand it. Amen. I even asked this in my own walk. Amen. Why is it we're wanting more technology? We're more worried about video games. We're more worried about computers and technology. Amen. Then we're worried about prayer. Amen. Why is it? Amen. Why is it? We care more about, amen, tinkering out in the garage, amen, than the things of God. Why is it? That going out on a lake and fishing for fish is more pleasurable than fishing for men. Come on now. Why?
why is it the things of this earth seem to be more pleasurable, keep us more entertained, keep us more occupied than the things of God? Because that's what Cain's lineage did. Why is it people are more concerned on Sunday morning with other things than wanting to be in the house of God? Why is it we're more entertained with uh, hearing people on television than hearing from the Lord himself? And the Lord's saying, rise up. Amen? Amen? And that's just not for you or, or maybe on camcorder. This is for me as well, amen, because the Lord has been dealing with me. And he said, don't take it lightly what you're doing. And so he had to tell me first, amen, it's the same with you. Rise up. Amen. The Lord's given the answer. Rise up to his standard. Throw away the idols. Throw away. Amen. Better first in your heart instead of the Lord. That's why Cain's lineage invented all these things. Amen. They made a city, built a whole city that was all about um, learning and education without God. We see through his lineage that came uh, musical instruments. We th see through his uh, lineage came uh, craftsmen that were good with metal and working. And we see through his lineage that came poetry. Why? Because they walked away from the things of God. They walked away from the presence of the Lord. Amen. And so they became self-absorbed with themselves. And they had to continually keep inventing things or coming up with things instead of going to God. Why is it? Amen. amen. We can sit on a video game for two or three hours, but we can't spend five minutes in prayer. Amen? It's good, isn't it? Why is it? Amen. We got to find pleasures outside of church Sunday morning than wanting to come to church and worship God. Why is it we want to hear from the television than hear from the Word of God? Why is it? Amen. That we... I like this one. Why is it that... Amen. And we got a lot of fishermen that come to this church. Amen. I like fishing too. Why is it we like catching fish out of a lake rather than catching fish for the Lord? Fishers of men. Mm, that hurts. Amen. Because we're self-absorbed with a false security. Amen. The Lord says he's a jealous God. He's a jealous God. Amen. He wants your time. Amen. He wants you to talk with Him. He wants to talk to you. Amen. He wants you to worship Him. Amen. He wants you so just wrapped up in the Lord and the Lord only and not other things. And He says, what are you doing? Rise up. Come to me. Amen. Amen. And so we see what the problem is. We see what the answer is. We see what the problem is. People being self-absorbed, complacent, not wanting to go any farther. Amen. Smug. Arrogant and with a false security. Because that's what Israel was and that's what the church is. Amen. I said that's what the church is. Amen. So first he gives the answer. And he gives what the problem is. Amen. And he can't say that's not the problem because it is. We all know that. We may not say amen to it, but we know deep down in our hearts, including me, including you, and including on camera, that's what our problem is, self-absorbent. And here now we see what's going to happen because of it. He says, many days and years shall you be troubled. Not just many days, but many years shall you be troubled. Haven't we seen trouble in the United States for the last several years? In 2001, the Twin Towers fell. In 2007, New Orleans was underwater. Amen. A year or two ago, we had the Boston uh, bombing, the Marathon bombing. 
Just last week, we now had a beheading. Many troubles, uh, troubles you're going to have for many years because we're self-absorbent. Complacent. With a false security, thinking it won't happen to us. And he says, for the vintage shall fail. The vintage was grape, uh, grapes. Talking about fruit. Amen. Everything God has given you, you will lose. Any fruit of the Spirit that's been birthed in you, that the Holy Spirit's put there, any fruit from God that He's put there, you'll lose. And the gathering shall not come. The harvest is ready. We're in the last days. The harvest is ready. It's white. It's ready to be gathered. That doesn't say the harvest shall not come, but the gathering shall not come. Meaning, there's not going to be people coming to Christ because there's nobody there to gather them because they're self-absorbed with their own life, their own things. Why is it, just as I said, amen, why is it that we're more worried about catching fish than catching men? Why is it that we're out in the garage tinkering with things instead of coming to God? Why is it that we watch television instead of hearing from the Lord? Why is it we're doing other things? Amen. Why is it that we think uh, video games can entertain us instead of coming to the Lord? Amen. And what's happening because of it? We're having trouble for many days and many years. And it's only going to get worse. I said it's only going to get worse. And nothing's going to be gathered. Why is it all these things are happening? Why is it that we'll build, we'll spend thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on our own homes, on our own properties, on our own cars, on our, on our own, all these things, amen? But we won't spend it on the work of God. Amen? I'm here to win souls, amen. I've been looking for a bigger place to bring in the harvest, amen. And this isn't to the point of my message, but I just want to say this, amen. I don't honestly and truthfully say, amen, when we've looked for another place, a bigger place to bring in the harvest, because I'm expecting something big. I really haven't heard one person tell me, we're with you all the way. Amen. Amen. Not one. Now, don't get me wrong. Amen. I don't know your hearts. Amen. So I'm not saying anything against that. Amen. But it, it, just, it just boggles my mind. We'll spend thousands and thousands, thousands on ourselves, on our homes, on our properties, on our cars. And don't get me wrong. Amen. As a parent, yes, we should have a home over our children's head. Amen. We do need a vehicle to get to work. Amen. But why is it we're so caught up in that and the work of the Lord is standing idle? Amen. Think about that. Think about it. Amen. That's just not to you. That's to those on camera who may be going to another church as well that's preaching the message across. And that's for me as well. Amen. Why is it I just spent a couple hundred dollars, amen, on technology when I could have put that hundred, couple hundred dollars into the church and, amen, tried to win a few more souls? Amen. Amen. I ain't going to get no amens. I'm preaching pretty good then. Amen. Because we're self absorbed. That includes me, that includes you, and that includes you on camera. We're all self-absorbed. Amen. God help us. Amen. And the Lord's telling us this morning, rise up. He's called us to a work. We have a mission, amen, but it's not going to get done if we don't rise up. Amen. And get the work done. So he tells us what the answer is. 
He tells us what the problem is. Now he tells us what's going to happen. Amen. If it doesn't happen, if we do not rise up and we just stay self-absorbed or we stay complacent, stay in neutral and don't push forward with faith. Amen. First of all, we're going to have trouble for many days and not only many days, but many, many years. Amen. Why? Because the vintage shall fail. The fruit shall fail. Whatever God's given you, you'll lose. Amen. Whatever fruit he's birthed into your spirit, amen, you'll lose. And the harvest, while the harvest is ready, the gathering will never happen. Because they'll be too worried about self-absorbent, getting their own things, amen, fulfilling their own lusts of the flesh. Amen. So the gathering shall not come. And the Lord says, tremble. Tremble. Amen. He says, tremble. You women, talking about the Israel, and it could talk about the church for today in the dispensation of grace. He says, tremble. You who are at ease, be troubled. Amen. You careless ones, strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. Isaiah, the Lord through Isaiah was saying, you should be trembling and you should be fearing what's going to happen. But the problem is, nobody's got the fear of the Lord. Because they're at ease with a full security and self-absorbed about their own things. And the Lord's saying, you should be trembling at this. This should put the fear of God in you. And if it's not, there's a problem. If that doesn't scare you, what the Lord's going to allow it to happen, my Lord, God help us. That just tells me we're all self-absorbed. And he says, because the time's going to come, they shall lamb it for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Amen. But upon the land of my people shall come thorns and briars. Yes, upon all the houses of joy and the joyous cities. Amen. They're going to wish that they had what they could have had. Amen. There will be people saying, amen, who mock and make fun about people speaking in tongues or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They're going to wish they now had it. Amen. The things of God. Amen. When perilous times shall come and they're already here, amen, and you had a chance and an opportunity to go to a church and hear the truth, plain and simple, without any compromise, amen, then they're going to wish they'll be able to go to a church that had that because they ain't going to find it anymore. Amen. Why? Because thorns and briars came upon all the houses. Amen. On the houses of joy, even in the joyous cities. Amen. The Lord said, woe unto them, amen, who now laugh, because their laughter will turn into mourning. Amen. And guess what? America's laughter is now turning into mourning, amen, with every single act of persecution that comes upon us. Amen. And it's going to get worse, Amen. The blessings are finally starting to run out, amen. And instead of fruit and uh, ble uh, blessings and plentiful fields, amen, we're now seeing thorns and briars where there used to be plenteous. Amen. And then it reads in verse 14, it says, Because the palaces shall be forsaken. What does that mean? That means it's going to affect the rich too, not just the poor. Palaces will be forsaken. Amen. Doesn't matter how much money you put back. Doesn't matter how much you have in stocks. Doesn't matter how much you have in the bank. It doesn't ha matter how much retirement you put back. It doesn't matter how much savings you try to hold aside. It will affect you too. Right. Amen. Riches can't save you and the riches won't help you when God pours out his judgment. Why? Because we're self-absorbed and we're complacent. Amen. Amen. He said, the multitude of the cities shall be left. Amen. Look at the cities in the United States. Isn't Detroit now, that used to be Motor City, is mostly desolate now? Amen. 
We've had tornadoes wipe out towns. The forts and towers shall be dens forever. Our protection will be gone. Amen. If you notice, our protection is already dwindling. Amen. Look at all the attacks we've had just on this country alone. Amen. We'll be left defenseless like a city without walls. Amen. And it'll continue this way until until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. Amen. Until the Spirit, the answer for all this is the Spirit. Until we rise up to the standard that the God has set for us. Amen. Which is faith in the cross and looking to Him exclusively. And just as He told Abraham, looking to Him and Him being our shield and our great exceeding reward. When we're looking to heavenly things instead of the earthly things. And until we rise up and do that. Amen. Until we rise up and do that, we're going to have many days and many years of trouble. Amen. As long as we continue being self-absorbed, worrying about ourselves, worrying about our own things we want to do here on earth. Amen. Putting things into self and our own possessions or whatever until it's going to the Lord. Amen. Whether it be spiritual, physical, or financial, we're going to have many days and troubles. Amen. And people, and nobody has to say anything here or on camera. Amen. Because if that don't scare you, if that don't make you tremble, just like it does, says in 11, and it doesn't trouble you, then that just tells me the church is self absorbent. Amen. Amen. I'll say that again. If that does not make you tremble in your spirit and in your soul, and you're not troubled, then that just tells me that's what the problem is. Self-absorbent, complacent. I've went as far as I want to go with God, and that's all the farther I'm going. I've got everything I need. Doesn't that sound familiar in Revelations? I've got everything I need. I've got my goods, I've got my materials, I've got everything I want. Amen. And so we just be complacent. And, we, and because we're complacent, we go to a level like Cain, where we're inventing other things, going and doing other things, trying to uh, do other things to fulfill the lust of the flesh instead of rising up to the level that Seth was on. Amen. What level was Seth on, which was Adam and Eve's son as well? Amen. If you look back in Genesis chapter 4, verse 25, and this is talking about Seth's lineage now. And it says, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. For God said, She has appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Seth rised up. He rose up. Amen. Put his eyes on the sacrifice to come, amen, which is the cross for us today. And then he looked to heavenly things, amen, to the things of God instead of the earthly things, because that's what Cain was doing. And because he did that, men called upon the name of the Lord, and the Spirit was poured out. Amen. That's the only way it's going to happen. Amen. The answer is, rise up. Amen. Not rise up to religion. Not rise up to works. Not rise up to anything else. But rise up to faith in God's redemption plan. Amen. And looking to Him. Amen. And to heavenly things. Amen. Rising up to religion and just reading your Bible or saying, reciting certain prayers over and over again is not rising up. Amen. That's no different than 
our Catholic brothers and sisters repeating the same thing. Hail Mary, Mother of Grace. Hail Mary, Mother of Grace. Hail Mary, Mother of Grace. It's the same thing in the Protestant. We say, Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. Amen. Or we may sit down at the dinner table and say, Lord, thank you for this food. Lord, thank you for this food. Lord, thank you for this food. Lord, thank you. And just repeat it. That's not what I'm talking about, rising up. I'm talking about rising up. Amen. First of all, putting your faith in the redemption plan. Amen. And then hungering after God. Thirsty for God. Saying, Lord, I want to know more about you. Lord, teach me, show me. Having a relationship with him. Amen. And just not a relationship on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Thursday night, or Wednesday, or whenever your Bible study is on camera. Amen. But rising up to a level where you're just constantly engulfed in the will of God. Where your will and your mind is always meditating on the Lord. Just thinking about, Lord, what is it you want me to do? Lord, lead me. Lord, show me. Lord, guide me. Lord, feed me. Lord. Amen. That should be crying out in your heart and your soul and your spirit all day long. Praying without ceasing. Amen. Just crying out in your heart, Lord. That's all he wants and that's what he's telling you. Rise up to this. Amen. Do you really think the Apostle Paul, amen, came on a, a Saturday afternoon, the Sabbath, or on a Sunday morning for church and did his thing and said, okay guys, I'll see you next Sunday and plopped down in front of a TV and did bloop. Do you think the 12 apostles, Peter, James, John, do you think they just did their thing on the weekend and then said, okay, we'll see you next weekend, fellas? No, they were engulfed by it. Amen. That was their whole life. Amen. And some may ask and say, well, what about what I want to do? Your life's not yours anymore. You were supposed to lose it at the cross. Amen. You now belong to the Lord. You were supposed to lose your life so you could gain it. Amen. I'll say that again. You were supposed to lose your life when you crucified self. Self's supposed to be dead. But we don't want to hear that. Amen. I said we don't want to hear that. Because the world has taught over the last uh, several decades of psychology and self-love, self-absorbent. And God's saying, get out of that and rise up to my level, my standard. Amen. Put your faith in me, crucify self, look to heavenly things. Amen. But again, the problem is they're at ease with a false security and they're careless, meaning they're self-absorbed all about themselves and complacent. Don't want to go any farther with God. The highest form of rebellion is walking away from the things of God and following after earthly things and idols. That is the highest form of rebellion against God. Amen. That's what Cain did. It says he walked away from the presence of the Lord. And when he did that and walked away from the things of the Lord, guess what? His lineage had started inventing other things. Craftsmen of metal, poetry, musical instruments, cities that were for learning without God. And only when Seth and his lineage rose up to the Lord's level, put their faith in God's redemption plan and was absorbed in God's will and consecrated themselves onto Him and Him alone, then and only then did men call upon the name of the Lord. And that's what the Lord's saying this morning because we have a mission, church. God hasn't just put us here for no reason. We have a mission. Amen. Just as he told his 12 apostles or 12 disciples. Amen. He said, go out, uh, don't go to the Gentiles, but go to the lost sheep. 
Amen. And he said, heal the sick, raise the dead. Amen. Do all these things, amen. And if you go into a city and they don't uh, accept you, wipe off the dust of your feet, amen. And go on to the next one. And that's what I'm going to be preaching about tonight. Amen. What the Lord's called us to do. Now, does that mean we don't witness to the, uh, the sinners? No. But judgment begins in the house of God. And what has happened is the church has been so false security and so much self-absorbent. First of all, we've got to get the church back in order. Amen. Because that's where judgment begins. And so the Lord's saying, you need to go to the lost sheep who are stranded, don't know what to do, and have been told lies, amen, and preach the word to them and tell them what the answer is and tell them to rise up, amen, come back to the cross, amen, come back to the old paths, amen, heal the sick, amen, cast out demons, amen. But before we do that, us ourselves, including myself, say, amen, you think that, many of you probably think, well, he's just preaching to us. No, well, yes, I am. And I'm preaching to those on camera, but God also had to preach to me too, amen. I had to listen to Brother Lauren give the same message. I probably didn't do as great as him, but hey, I did my best, amen. Now I'm still believing the Lord will anoint it. But he had to preach to me too, and it hurt, amen. Yeah, I got to eat it first before you can eat it, amen. I didn't like it. Well, what did he do about you? That's really none of your business, but I'll tell you anyways, amen. Just as I said, I like video games, amen. I would play video games instead of... Uh, Studying the word of God like I should have been most of the time. Amen. And the Lord kept telling me, don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. Come to me. What are you doing? Spend time with me. Get on the television. Watch movies and stuff. Now, there's nothing wrong with watching a movie every now and then. But when you're self-absorbed in it and that you're more worried about fulfilling that than and reading the word of God, there's a problem. When that becomes more pleasing to you than open up in the book, there's a problem. Amen. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just get everybody here, amen. I started with myself. I'll, I'll get everybody here, amen. I'll start with me, amen. When the computer games are more entertaining, amen, and more pleasurable than opening up God's word, there's a problem. Going out in the garage and tinkering with things is more pleasurable, amen, than hearing from the Lord uh, through prayer, through reading the word, is a problem, amen. Going to the lake and fishing and catching fish instead of uh, getting more uh, pleasure, amen, and more uh, a hunger than catching men and women, there's a problem. So it's just not for you, it's for me, and it is for you, and it's those on camera, and it's for every other church, amen, because this is what the church has fallen to, false security and self-absorbent. That's what the Laodicean church was doing, and that's the church age we're living in right now, amen, and the Lord and the Holy Spirit is crying out to us right now, rise up, amen, rise up. Up, there is more important things at stake than our earthly possessions or our uh, self-will. Amen. Because if we don't rise up, many days and years we will be troubled. Why? Because the vintage shall fail. Whatever fruit of the Spirit we've had, whatever the Lord spiritually given us, we'll lose eventually. Amen. And not only that, the harvest won't be gathered. Amen. So this, and the next verse, he says, tremble and be troubled. Because if you're not, if this has not made you think or have a fear of the Lord, now I'm talking about a good, healthy fear of the Lord. Amen. You don't have to fear man. You have to fear the Lord. Amen. So the idea here was not to fear man or to fear the world system, but to fear God and what he could allow if we don't rise up. Because he's the one in control. Amen. So if you're not trembling at the Lord and fearing the Lord and not troubled by what the Lord could allow, then that just tells me, amen, the problem is correct, what Isaiah said. We're self-absorbed. We're complacent. And if you notice in my preaching all this morning, I said we. I didn't say you. I said we. Right? We. We. Amen. Not me. Not just me. Not just me where you say, Amen, Pastor. God must be dealing with you. No. I didn't say that. I didn't say you. 
saying, well, why don't he have any problems? No, I said we. That includes those on camera. I'm sure somebody on camera is shaking their head yes too. We have become complacent, self-absorbent, more worried about our own lives when they should have been lost at the cross. Amen. When we crucified flesh and a new man was born. Amen. And so he's telling us this morning, the Holy Spirit's crying out to us, rise up. Time is running out. Time is short. And if you don't rise up, amen, whatever fruit the Lord has given you and birthed in you, you will lose. Amen. Because you'll have many days and many years of trouble. And the harvest won't be gathered. Amen. And, they'll come, and you'll, there'll come a time where we'll be laminating, wishing. Oh, I wish we had the things of God like we used to. Amen. Because instead of the fruit coming up and the blessings coming up, the thorns and the briars will come up. Amen. Even it'll affect even the rich. The palaces will be forsaken. Amen. The money won't help you. Cities will be desolate, will be left. Amen. The forts and towers where it once held the strong men to protect the country will be desolate. Amen. And the pastures of the flock and the wild asses here will be in its place. Amen. And this will continue to happen until the Spirit be poured upon us. Well, how does the Spirit be poured upon us? It's simple, just as I said the first two words this morning, rise up. Rise up. Amen. When you rise up, you'll call upon the name of the Lord. And he'll pour out his grace. Amen. Amen. Would you stand? That was a wonderful message. I, I'm sure Brother Lorne wouldn't uh, mind me preaching one of his messages that the Lord gave him. Amen. It was a good message. I encourage every one of you. Amen. If you've listened to this message. Amen. Go on to the um, podcasts online. Type in Lauren Larson, and he preached the same message, amen, but it's a lot better when it comes from him than from me, amen. Uh, he just preaches and teaches in a way I can't even explain, but uh, it's called overcoming complacency, and you'll be blessed by it, just as I've tried to minister the same thing what the Holy Spirit gave uh, Brother Lauren, amen. I've tried to uh, minister the same thing, and I'm still believing the Lord will anoint it and open people's ears and hearts and minds and Maybe give them a little fear of the Lord and rise up. Amen. And why is the reason that you preach this morning? Because number one, we need it. Especially in these last days. Because we're in the Laodicean church age. And number two, God's called us to a mission. What I'm going to preach tonight. Going to the lost sheep. And in order to go to the lost sheep and tell them the answer, we are first going to need to rise up and not be self-absorbent anymore. Amen. And if this message isn't heeded, the only thing that's going to happen is trouble for many days and not only that, many years. Amen. And the vintage shall fail and the gathering shall not come. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, I've done my best to uh, minister your message, Lord, and I ask, Lord, that you uh, take it to your people's hearts, Lord, and help us, Lord. Lord, help our unbelief, Lord, and give us a hunger, Lord, and give us a thirst for more of you, Lord, and not to be just complacent or self-absorbent, Lord, but let us uh, crucify self, Lord. Let us crucify the flesh, Lord, and let it be all about you, Lord, because we're not our own anymore. We've been bought by a price with your son's blood, Lord, and we ask, Lord, to uh, um, be swallowed up in your will, Lord, and let nothing else be on our mind but your will being done. And, Lord, we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen.